The last thing I wanted to do that day was sneak into the Wernforth Outdoor Pursuit Centre searching for unused hiking gear to equip my tribe of seven potential walkers. On Monday evenings, I always, well, almost always, stay home and watch TV to recover from the shock of working, you know. But that fateful Monday evening followed a day of excess drinking, planning a wild escapade, if escapades can be planned, and of stealing stroke, borrowing rucksacks, canoes, protective clothing, visors and even skis from the pursuit centre's storage cupboards and loading them onto my little works lorry. How could I have known that the Wernforth Centre had CCTV and a silent alarm? This happy, read still drunk and still drinking gang of boisterous ne'er-do-wells drove immediately to our planned destination in the Brecon Beacons and there we began rigging ourselves up with all the borrowed strokes stolen stuff, drinking more lager and marvelling at how our well-meant crime and journey had been so trouble and accident-free. As group leader, primary agitator and chief daydreamer, I sighed and swigged my millionth Carlsberg as I took a few steps away from the car park. The noises emanating from the voices and actions of my co-conspirators were too harsh, too grating, but I was appreciative of their enthusiasm and joy in our shared mission. My head swam with the joy of finally achieved ambition. We were to finally search for the elves of the beacons. We had maps, journals, hastily written instructions and even a deathbed confession. We would reach the elves, whether by canoe or by land or by mountain climbing. We now had the gear. We always had the quest mentality. We would seek the elves and the elven kingdom would redeem mankind. Dan, come and get strapped up, shouted Johnny. But I shook my head. Give me five. Want to get the lie of the land? I began to walk away from the car park, up the heather-covered hill. We were already high. Ascending this small peak would give me a panoramic view of the Elven Kingdom. Guzzling Carlsberg, I reached the top and turned to survey the scene. On that foggy morning, it felt as if we seven thieves and adventurers were the only beings in the world. Aside, of course, from the powerful and glorious Beacon Elves, who, alone possess the power to heal major wrongs and to give our species a true direction, the human quest. Only then did I turn to look at the distant roads and, as the morning's mists cleared, the police cars and vans emerged, heading towards us. Always scuppered, always humanity getting in the way of the elven kingdom. Well, this wasn't my first attempt and it wouldn't be my last. I fell to my knees. Elven King, I said, we must leave now, but for the sake of humanity, we'll be back. That was The Last Thing by Leslie Atherton.